Models like Roberta or GPT are pre-trained by predicting masked out words or tokens on a massive amount of text. This text comes from internet dumps like the Common Crawl Corpus or Web Text or a Books Corpus or Wikipedia. In Don't Stop Pre-Training, researchers explore whether these models still benefit from a second phase of domain-specific pre-training, or if the pre-training on such a diverse corpus is enough and you don't need further phases of pre-training. However, the authors show that a second phase of pre-training always improves the models. They further show that in addition to pre-training in-domain, where you might have, say, 2.6 million biomedical papers, pre-training on the task data itself can yield further gains. The authors experiment across four domains from news articles, Amazon reviews, and computer science and biomedical research papers, and explore two classification tasks for each of these domains. This video will explore some of the details and motivations behind Don't Stop Pre-Training, recipient of an honorable mention best paper award at the ACL 2020 conference. This video will explain Don't Stop Pre-Training, an investigation into further pre-training with the Roberta language model. This paper was awarded an honorable mention for best paper award at the ACL 2020 conference. The current trend in natural language processing has been to scale up pre-training. So we have these larger transformer models all the way up to GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters and down to models like BERT and Roberta, which usually have between 200 and 500 million parameters. But we're also pre-training these models on massive amounts of unlabeled text data. So this comes from just doing these internet dumps where you have things like the common crawl corpus or the web text or where you're filtering the Reddit posts and using that to pre-train these models. And you use books and Wikipedia, news articles, all these data sets to pre-train these models like Roberta or BERT or GPT or what have you. So the question now is, do these latest pre-trained models work universally? Have they you know, trained on so much text that you don't need to further fine tune them with the same pre-training task on the domain? So we'll get more into this idea of the different domains that are explored going from this massive 160 gigabyte uncompressed text corpus into say biomedical research papers, computer science papers, or different news articles. So this idea of continuing the pre-training from domain to domain after it's already been trained on this massive amount of uh, pre-training data. Hopefully this image further illustrates the concept of continued pre-training. So we have the original Roberta model off the shelf that's trained on this 160 gigabytes of uncompressed text, and we might just fine tune that representation right for some biomedical paper classification task. It could be, or just say it's like a sentiment analysis model or something like that, just going straight from this pre-trained model right into fine tuning for the classification task. But another way to do this would be to go from the pre-trained Roberta model on 165, uh, 160 gigabytes of text and then do the continued pre-training on the biomedical papers domain. So this might still be a massive amount of text. It might be like 100,000 biomedical papers and it's gonna continue doing mass language modeling on this data set. And then you could imagine further doing this pipeline on the task data itself. So say we're uh, looking at individual sentences and doing uh, sentiment or some, some task within this biomedical paper domain, we'll imagine further doing uh, pre-training tasks on that task specific data. So this is gonna be a smaller subset of the domain set. So this should be a smaller cylinder, but so you continue this pipeline, fine tuning the pre-training on the domain, then on the task data, and then actually fitting the model to the task itself. So this is a quote directly from this paper that we're going through right now, Don't Stop Pre-Training. And you see how you would take this sentence from this computer science paper and you would mask it out and continue doing this mass language modeling pre-training task to fine tune the model to this, this uh, like machine learning paper domain. Within this framework of going from the original pre-training data corpus into the domain and then into the task data for continued pre-training, the authors of this paper, Don't Stop Pre-Training, are curious about how this benefit varies with the amount of labeled task data that we have and then the proximity of the target domain to the original pre-training corpus. So say we have the biomedical paper domain, how similar is that to this 160 gigabytes of uh, news articles and all this different stuff? And how can we kind of measure this kind of domain similarity? So generally the relationship is something like this. We have this large original domain that is just this web dump that's used to pre-train Roberta or GPT. And then we have this larger domain of say all the biomedical papers or all the different news articles. And then within this domain, we have this subset of data for the task. 
And so this uh, darker ellipsis is the um, labeled task data, and this could be the unlabeled task data, but it's still been curated kind of for this task compared to just the entire domain of kind of uh, all the text that's relevant to this task. So the authors come up with a heuristic to measure domain similarity. They look at something like the 10,000 most frequent words that are used in each of these different domains. So they don't have the exact pre-training data set used for Roberta, but they make something comprising the Wikipedia, Books Corpus, just smashing them together and then looking at the overlap in the top 10,000 uh, most frequently used words. So you see this high overlap between the Roberta Corpus and the news article domain, and then less so with reviews, and then even less so with biomedical papers and computer science papers. And you see the overlap between, say, biomedical papers and computer science papers, or reviews, and this is the heuristic that they're going to use to measure the similarity of text domains. And so then they're going to look at, you know, how much benefit do you get, say, from doing Roberta to the computer science domain compared to Roberta to the news domain when Roberta and the news domain have more original overlap. The authors are going to be exploring multi-phase pre-training across four different domains and eight classification tasks two classification tasks for each of the domains. So we have biomedical papers with 2.68 million full text papers, computer science papers, news articles, and then reviews with about 25 million Amazon reviews. So you see the number of the tokens, the size of the data set ranging from 47 gigabytes to 11 gigabytes, and the comparison with the pre-training corpus for Roberta. So then these are some of the classification tasks that we're gonna look at later on in the uh, downstream tasks. So we see the number of labeled examples. In this case, we see uh, in relation classification for uh, probably this chemistry data set, probably like a chemical protein interaction or something like that. In the biomedical domain, you see that they have only 4,000 uh, labeled examples compared to 2.68 million full text papers in the biomedical domain. So you see how like the domain concept is much larger than the task specific data. So you can further look at the difference in the tasks uh, the news, the topic classification, uh, sentiment analysis from reviews. So this is kind of just to get an idea of the domains that they're exploring and the classification tasks for the downstream fine tuning. Before going further into the domain adaptive pre-training and then the task adaptive pre-training and the combination of both, here are some quick takeaways from the study. So they find that the second phase of pre-training in domain, so starting out from Roberta and then going to say the biomedical or the computer science, news or reviews, this kind of pre-training corpus, and still doing mass language modeling leads to gains in the high and low resource settings. So these are the metrics you see going from, say, 81.9 to 84.4, or 87.2 to 87.8, and so on with all the different tasks. You see these gains by doing this additional phase of pre-training. And another uh, video recently made is the checklist model. It might be cool also to see if a second phase of in-domain pre-training leads to better results on the checklist evaluation rather than just the held out test set. But also, so adapting to the task unlabeled data improves performance even after domain adaptive pre-training. So they find that doing this additional phase of domain pre-training and then the task data pre-training shows more gains. And then when there isn't a lot of uh, unlabeled data, which we'll get into more later, they come up with this technique to do data selection with a shared uh, text embedding space to sample for doing the task adaptive pre-training. This table shows the results from the first phase of continued pre-training, the domain adaptive pre-training, where we go from the 160 gigabytes of uncompressed text from Roberta and then fine tune into language modeling with these different domains, biomedical, computer science papers, uh, news articles, and Amazon reviews. So similar to the heuristic where we look at this overlap, we see the most gains in the computer science papers from the original, uh, from the continued pre-training. We go from 63 to 75, 77 to 80, and you see this gain because they have this low vocabulary overlap, and as it does this continued pre-training, it sees big gains on the downstream task. So another interesting thing about this table is that they're showing that these gains aren't just from training on more data. So they also do continued pre-training on one of these other randomly sampled domains, I think, uh, biomedical pairs with news and they pair with each other and computer science pairs with reviews or something like that but they train on another domain to show you that even uh, training on another domain might actually go worse than the original roberta model and that it is important that these are in domain uh, continued pre-training corpuses the authors then explore task adaptive pre-training in the second phase of continued pre-training and this is a much different setting because this is a much smaller pre-training corpus but it is more task relevant so the domains, they're still like, even the smallest one was something like 2.68 million papers, 
whereas some of these tasks only have uh, like 4,000 labeled examples. But the authors describe this paradigm where most of the time in the real world, the way we build these data sets is we'll aggregate a massive amount of source uh, dot, like text that could be a part of the task, and then we'll only label a subset of the available data. So they talk about using this unlabeled data that's from the domain, but it's not quite uh, like the entire domain. It's still been curated by uh, manually curated that this data is well fit for the task. It just hasn't been labeled yet. So they look at using that unlabeled data as well to do the mass language modeling and continue the pre-training. So the authors continue this experiment with task adaptive pre-training by taking a subset of the labeled data for one of the tasks, only treating 500 of the examples as labeled, and then using the rest for the continued phase of pre-training and show that this has continued gains. So they also include this table of the computational requirements of these additional phases of pre-training. Even though you're getting these gains, it requires more pre-training. You have to do more steps of this pre-training and uh, and this can be costly. So it, it describes the different steps that are required to do the domain adaptive pre-training and the task adaptive pre-training. And you see that the domain adaptive pre-training, because again, it's a much larger set of data, requires much more steps than just doing the task adaptive pre-training. And they also show using uh, this heuristic, this uh, strategy for doing automatic collection of unlabeled but task relevant data and how that can improve performance and, you know, but at the cost of t taking more steps through the data. So I didn't look too much into this, uh, exactly how this algorithm works, but they have this automated data selection technique for the task adaptive pre-training. So they have all the data in the domain and they wanna find the subset that is relevant for the downstream task. So they use this uh, vampire model to embed the text from the task and text from the larger domain in the shared space. And then it's a K nearest neighbors of the text from the domain with the embedded text from the task. And that's how they'll sample it to automatically get uh, text from this larger domain that's relevant for the downstream task and is useful for this continued phase of pre-training on that task relevant data. So one of the conclusions of this paper is that the authors of Don't Stop Pre-Training recommend that authors of task data sets release a large pool of unlabeled task data for their tasks to aid this model adaptation through pre-training. So you can look through a lot of these natural language processing data sets on Hugging Face's NLP Viewer. It's a really great interface for this. But take a data set like the Quora Question Pairs data set. It's a lot of these pairs of questions from Quora that are labeled as whether they're duplicates or not. But this is an example where there is a massive set of these question pairs and only a subset of them are actually labeled. So they're recommending that you include this entire set of all the questions so that you can use it for this continued phase of mass language modeling pre-training before fine-tuning the model for the exact task with the labeled data for duplicate question detection. They also discuss future work of a curriculum of these domain and task distributions and you know more ways of scheduling this kind of multi-phase pre-training. Another trend in natural language processing is to take these pre-trained models off the shelf like the BERT model and then just fine-tune it for our downstream task. But this study implies that we might have these more domain-specific models. So say we're looking at machine learning research papers and we have some downstream task in mind, will there be a machine learning BERT? And say we have a Twitter model and we now need Twitter BERT instead of just BERT, and now machine learning Twitter BERT when we're combining it all together and the further uh, phases of domain pre-training improve the model performance because we're taking these models off the shelf because it's computationally expensive to train BERT on your own machine. That's why you grab it from uh, the open source uh, model weights so that you can avoid having to do this continued uh, or pre-training at all on your own machine. So is this the future that we're gonna see where we have these specific variants of the transformer models, but within these each of these domains? Or, you know, this experiment is with Roberta, which is a pretty big transformer, it's probably somewhere around 300 million parameters, but GPT-3 with 175 billion parameters, or even imagining the next iteration with GPT-4, all this uh, advancements on the design of transformers with longer context, all sorts of different things of designing these models, Maybe with 3 trillion parameters in GPT-4, this study wouldn't still hold and you wouldn't see any more gains from doing this further pre-training. And it's kind of interesting to think of these two different paths that could play out from this and whether it really will, it, just a bigger model will not need additional in-domain pre-training or if you could, like you could just train it on all the domains. Thanks for watching this explanation of Don't Stop Pre-Training, showcasing that even though Roberta was trained on 160 gigabytes of uncompressed text, books, Wikipedia, news articles, it still shows to benefit from further pre-training in the domain of the downstream task. So tr further training it on Amazon reviews or news articles, 
computer science or biomedical papers. This shows that the data is still a really important part of this pipeline, and these results just show that you have this huge uh, benefit by doing multi-phase pre-training to get closer to the data distribution that the task is in. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos. Mm-hmm.